Welcome back to JRE Unleashed. Today we have Joe Rogan and Derek talk about the story of Fear Factor and how doing comedy is very organic with no middle parties. They discuss how Joe Rogan is a renowned comedian, actor, and podcast host who has been in the entertainment industry for over three decades. He is widely known for his fearless approach to comedy and his willingness to push boundaries. In a recent interview, he spoke about his experience hosting the popular reality show, Fear Factor, and how he believes that doing comedy is a very organic process. Rogan explained that Fear Factor was a unique experience for him because it was one of the few times he had to work within a structured environment. He said that the show had a lot of rules and guidelines that he had to follow, and he often found himself frustrated by the limitations it placed on him. Despite this, he acknowledged that the show was a great learning experience, and he was grateful for the opportunity. Let's get right into the interview with Joe Rogan and Derek. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be updated on all our future content. Thanks. And enjoy the video for everybody so he blows up you blow up and then we all help each other together so one of the great things about comedy now is that we have essentially like an organic network right instead of a network that we're all on under contract and you know everyone has to give x percentage to this and that to that and no no, no executives no no it's an organic network of people who are just friends who support each other and we just get together and have a good time is there any path, like, as you got to comedy, like, obviously you've done a bunch of different trajectories, like you did the, the reality show thing, you're an actor, you did, like, a bunch of different stuff. Is there any path that you, in hindsight, wish you leaned into harder or, like, fleshed out no, more? No, no, definitely not. No, 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 no. No, I think it was good to do Fear Factor just because um, it made me realize I don't ever want to do that again. Mm. It was just for money. Because yeah. the, the Fear Factor was something, it was a great job, I'm very happy that I got it. I worked with some great people. It was a lot of fun. Matter of fact, I was just hanging out with uh, one of the guys that I, I did it with the other day. Um, but that was only for money. Like, yeah. I only did it for money. Like, podcasts are fun. Like, stand up comedy is fun. That's the most fun. Stand up comedy is the most fun. Um, UFC commentary is fun. It's fun. Yeah. Either, it's more fun to watch. More fun to just watch fights. Yeah. But c commenting on fights, you get to watch from like right there. Like yeah. the fence is like right here in front of you. It was pretty f amazing. But no, none of those things. No, I, I, I'm definitely glad I got the acting out of my system. I don't like doing that. I don't like that's the least fun. Yeah, I think some of, like obviously I'm just speaking objectively from what I see. But some of the most like hyper successful individuals like yourself, it's being like hyper talented, but then also like fortuitous timing in a lot of different scenarios potentially and like there is some luck involved yeah like i'm i'm wondering like if you were to be like there's so much pressure on social media now for young guys especially at younger and younger ages to be like this crazy successful entrepreneurial individual even when they're like teenagers or something and like, what would you if you were to go back and be a teenager or a young 20s guy now and you're starting from scratch how would you approach it? Like, it's what? so much different. It's so hard to say. Yeah. Because when you're under the public eye of social media, and even if you just have a small account with like 500 followers, you still are under the public eye. Because something you say can go viral, and mm. then either you blow up or you're f yeah. Like either one of those scenarios is possible. So it's managing your life today is so much more problematic it's so much more difficult mm -hmm. i couldn't imagine being a teenager in high school with a f tiktok account yeah like we could just say wild how about that guy who was a football player who got denied a scholarship because he was singing along to the lyrics in a rap video and he said the n-word so there's oh, a video of him Jesus. singing along to a song he likes and Brutal. they kicked him out of the co the college very recent okay. yeah and he's like top draft pick like yeah, an yeah. elite quarterback <laughs> yeah <laughs> somebody else gonna pick him up or i don't i'm gonna hope so yeah i hope so but i mean wild. imagine i mean that could change the trajectory of his entire life yeah because he was 15 and he thought he would he wanted he was just rapping along to a video like how do you they're saying it what can i say it? like you know Frontal lobe's not even formed at 15. Yeah. And to hold that kid to that, from that moment for the rest of his life. And that's just one example. There's so many examples of people ruining on social media because they don't know any better because they're or whatever. And it's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. Social media has become an integral part of our daily lives. And while it has many benefits, there are also significant dangers associated with its use. 
One of the most significant dangers of social media is its potential to negatively impact mental health. Studies have shown that social media use can lead to feelings of loneliness, anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. This is because social media often creates unrealistic expectations, encourages comparisons with others, and fosters an environment of constant validation seeking. I, I can't imagine that. I, yeah. I couldn't imagine growing up with that kind of connection to people. And I think in some ways it discourages people taking chances. It discourages people really finding themselves and how to express themselves. Like if every stand-up set you ever did from the beginning of your first open mic was online and available to people. That's horrendous. Yeah. Yeah, I guess all like the crash and burns and oh. all like the tri trial and error. Oh. You, yeah, that would not Yeah, be and then if you read those comments, like you fucking suck, quit, yeah. quit now. Like that would get in your head, you know? Oh, you, for sure. You can't move. Most of my bombings, like all my bombings really, were just in these weird nights and weird places and you, you get over it and then you move on and you just go, ugh, that one. Yeah. You know, that one I shouldn't have got drunk, or that one I was too tired, or that one I was too green, or that one I couldn't follow that guy. And these are all lessons that you learn, but you don't want to, you don't want to dwell on them constantly. Because if you do, you will put yourself back in the mindset of that person who you were when you were failing, yeah. which I think is just like very detrimental to growth. Like you got to be aware of shortcomings and failures, but you can't dwell. If you dwell on them, then you're maintaining this mindset of a person who just failed years after that failure. Yeah. Like, that was a long time ago. Like, you got to move on. Yeah. And if you don't move on, you're going to get stuck. And some people, look, there's some people that get stuck in high school forever. Yeah. Forever. We, we, you know, we know those stories. They had failures in high school. Maybe they got beat up in high school. You know, maybe they, uh, maybe they were in and they got their comeuppance in front of the whole school and they never recovered. Yeah. They never recovered. Maybe they were a dick and they, they were they were talking to some guy and he just beat the in front of everybody and they're like, No and every day that guy wakes up <laughs> years yeah. later and thinks about this failure. No, it's wild how like the earlier stuff happens, it seems to like very much affect the trajectory of your life. Yeah. Like very significantly. Very significantly. Yeah. High school's a big one, man, because it's like you're changing from a kid to a person to an adult. Like it's in in that process, so many mistakes are made. See, the wild thing is how even at your level of success, you trying to wrap your head around what you would do as like a young guy, you yeah. can't fathom it. No, so like imagine how overwhelmed <laughs> some right. clueless eighteen year old kid is. I can't imagine. Yeah. It's terrible for them. I think it's really terrible, and it's so available, and also it's addictive. It's yeah. not like something that's available that you don't really need to go to all the time. Everyone carries a goddamn phone with them everywhere they go. Yeah. So you're always connected to this. And kids are ruthless how they talk about each other on the internet. Oh, my yeah. God. They're so mean. Yeah, I wouldn't want to live like that. Hmm. But who knows? I mean, maybe it's one of those things where the way I've described it in the past is like I grew up in the Northeast. And uh, I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade that for the world, because there's something about growing up in a place where it f snows, where it's cold, and the winter comes, and you're f and, and when your car breaks down, you got to walk five miles, and you know negative ten degrees. That builds a resistance or a resilience rather in in a person that is. I don't think it's replaceable. I don't think you can get that. You can, I mean, you certainly could develop discipline and you could certainly develop resilience if you live somewhere else, especially if you have a hard childhood. There, those people develop a lot of resistance and a lot of resilience. But there's something about growing up in harsh climates that develops a specific type, type of character. Character, a person that values hard work and you get done. And it's like very common to uh, people that live in like the Northeast in Boston. Another danger of social media is the potential for cyberbullying. Online bullying has become a significant problem and social media platforms are often the primary vehicle for this type of behavior. Cyberbullying can lead to emotional distress, depression, and in some cases, even suicide. Furthermore, social media can also be used to spread hate speech, extremist views, and fake news. Users often share personal information online, including their location, or it can be used by malicious individuals to commit identity theft or other types of fraud. Make sure to check out the full episode with Joe Rogan and Derek by heading over to Spotify. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be updated on all our future content. Thanks.
and we'll see you in the next video.